Hey everybody, I have another Evercade game to review. One of the newest releases, the Pico Collection 2, which as usual comes with a nice full color manual. Every game gets at least one page of coverage with a little bit of description on how to play the game. And it also included a little sheet of stickers, which is kind of a neat touch. So let's go ahead and take the Pico Collection 2. Let's pop it in my Evercade and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the games. The Pico Collection 2 is cartridge number 16 in the Red Box series and is a relatively new release that came out here in the States at the very end of March 2021. As is typical, the games are arranged in a simple left-right menu screen, arranged in alphabetical order. When playing any game, you can hit the menu button to access an option screen, where you can save and load games, change the screen ratio, quit the game and go back to the main menu, and for select titles, customize the controls. The cartridge contains a lucky 13 games, all with a sports theme of some sort. I haven't had a lot of experience with most of these selections, so a good portion of my review will be based on my first impressions. Beastball is the first game. I believe this is based on a Sega Genesis prototype that was never released, which itself is based on brutal sports football on the Amiga. This plays like an extreme medieval version of rugby, and while it didn't immediately pull me in, I could see this one growing on me in the future. Eliminator Boat Duel for the NES is the second game. Even though it's not the greatest game, this quirky little title quickly became one of my favorites in this collection. The third title is Football Madness, a European PlayStation 1 release, and the first PlayStation game I believe that has been included on an Evercade collection. Take a basic soccer game for the PlayStation, then add power-ups like the ability to shrink and grow, and you have this game. Without the power-ups, this would have been a quick pass for me, but with the power-ups, it gives it enough flavor for me to want to return to it. Full Throttle All-American Racing for the Super Nintendo is the fourth game. This game has both motorcycle and wave race style racing, mixed with power-ups and road rash style combat. It sounds like a fun idea, but the gameplay itself fell flat for me. The fifth game is Hoops Shut Up and Jam, which was originally called Barkley Shut Up and Jam for the Sega Genesis. This game plays like a poor man's NBA jam, and I didn't get much out of it, but you do get to see Charles Barkley get a funny digital face transplant. The sixth game is Hoops Shut Up and Jam 2, which, as you guessed, is Barkley Shut Up and Jam 2 for the Genesis. Cut and paste what I said about the previous game here. The seventh game is Power Football, which was originally known as Mike Ditka's Power Football for the Sega Genesis. A poor man's John Madden football, it seems okay, but not as easy to pick up and play as Madden. And despite the name change, I still saw Ditka's name in the game, which may have been an oversight. The eighth game is Racing Fever, a European Game Boy Advance title, which might be the first Game Boy Advance title in the Evercade series, at least it's the first one I played. This feels like a budget title racer, but you know what? It's actually kind of a fun budget title racer. Soccer Kid is the ninth game. This is based on a European Super Nintendo release a platformer where you use a soccer ball to defeat the bad guys. I wish it was easier to pick up and play, but I'll probably give this one another chance down the line. The tenth game is Summer Challenge for the Sega Genesis, a mix of games in a choppy and a bit clumsy 3D world. It may have been technically impressive when it was first released, but it's not much fun now. The eleventh game is Top Racer 2 for the Super Nintendo. Here in the States we know it as Top Gear 2. This is probably the best game in the collection. An easy pick up and play arcade style racer with some rad racer and outrun vibes. The 12th game is Winter Challenge for the Sega Genesis. It's the same as Summer Challenge, but with snow, and snow based games of course. The last game is World Trophy Soccer for the Sega Genesis. This soccer game actually plays okay and could help pass the time. The emulation of these games seems very well done, but I'll include some gameplay from all the titles at the end of this video so you can judge for yourself. As is the case with all Evercade titles, this retails for $20, and while Amazon was sold out at the time of this recording, with third party sellers asking for around $35, it could currently be found for $20 at songbirdproductions.com, where shipping is a flat $8 per order. It also offers a decent value at $20, meaning each game costs you about $1.50, and a used copy of Top Gear 2 can go for about $20 by itself, while Eliminator Boat Duel can sell for $35. However, as is the case with many sport titles, several of the other games in the collection currently cost less than a cup of coffee from Starbucks. Family friendly wise, the game received a 12 and up rating most likely due to the animated violence in Beast Ball. So what do I think of the Pico Collection 2? 
as someone who's not a fan of most sports games, this is the first Evercade collection that fell a little flat for me. Don't get me wrong, it's cool to play Eliminator Boat Duel and Top Gear 2, and I don't regret spending $20 on it, but so far this is the least impressive collection I've played and the first collection that I cannot wholeheartedly recommend. Perhaps the most exciting aspect of this collection is seeing PlayStation and Game Boy Advance games included, meaning we could see more of those in future collections. So where am I going to rank Pico Collection 2? As you can guess, it's going straight to the bottom to the number 5 position. The Pico Collection 2 might be worth it if you see some titles you really enjoy, but if you're not a big sports fan, you might want to invest in a different game instead. But that's just what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow me both on the Facebook and the Twitter and click the bell so you don't miss any future videos. At this time, I'd like to thank all of my Patreon supporters. If you think these videos give you at least $1 per month of information and entertainment, please consider joining them at Patreon com slash gamer Not only will you help keep the show going, but you may also get a chance to nominate and vote on games for me to review. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day and I look forward to see you next time in the next episode of the No Swear Gamer. Take care everybody.